Hi, I'm Ed Scar, and in a recent video I showed off my pile of opportunity, that being all of the models that I own that I haven't gotten around to painting yet. And one of those is this Mad Donna Ullentai from the old Necromunda line. And when I pointed out this model, I said something along the lines of, and this is Mad Donna Ullentai from the old Necromunda game. A really cool model very punk and over the top and this is something I'm looking forward to getting around painting but I sort of want to be in the right mood for it. Which sounds awfully a lot like an excuse to me. Sounds awfully a lot like I'm putting this model up on a pedestal to say that oh it's it's too good for me to paint. Now I may not be the best painter in the world but having that attitude certainly is not going to help and so I'm going to pull this model down off of its pedestal and put some paint on it. And what better place to start to honor Ullentai than with her hair? The real reason I want to paint this model, that hair is huge. 80s punk and hella extra. But while I throw some base coats around, let's talk about the character behind the model. And for that, I need to delve a little bit into the lore of Necromunda. The commonly known gang names in the Necromunda games, Goliath, Escher, Vansar, Cordor, Dilak, and my personal favourites, the Orlocks, because they're the gun nuts, are well known to be the names of the houses Uphive, who the gangs work for or, or are affiliated with, often to an extremely loose definition of the word affiliated. Sometimes only occasionally taking contracts to get the dirty work done at the orders of their patrons, they even have that. But these houses are not the high houses, the ruling elite. These houses are merely the trading houses, which are still very rich and influential, but not on the same league as the high houses, who, like the rich in any civilization, expect money for getting everyone below them to do all the work. The real high houses, of course, are Catalius, Tai, Ulantai, Graim, Ranlo, Coloron, and the ruling house of Helmore, which I certainly know off by heart and didn't have to look up on the wiki. These high houses, including Ullentai, are, as you would expect from 40k, evil, because everyone in 40k is evil. But this time, a very recognisable evil. For Do'one Ullentai, that meant being married off to some noble for the prestige points it would bring her house. She was kept locked away and cruelly abused beforehand and was driven so angry she dropped all of her grace and poise, killing her would-be husband and escaping to the dreaded underhive. I expect this is the time that she started dyeing her hair, although possibly she had been her whole life, or it might even be a genetic body mod that only high hivers could afford or would even considering being worth the effort. However, when I first laid down that base coat, oh, did I ever have the thought to drop the model in some paint stripper. Possibly I had not mixed my paint properly, or the gathering dust was soaking into the paint, or some issue with the sculpt, but that base layer, that first layer, was awful, lumpy, and inconsistent. As you can see, I went off to paint some of the other parts of the model to psych myself up to have a go at fixing it, which I started with a purple shade. Now I'm not usually the one to buy washes in many colours, in fact I generally don't use very many washes at all. I find it more effort to clean up a wash than it would be to just paint from a darker base coat or add the shadows in manually, depending on what model I'm painting. But this purple paint was bought by mistake, gotta read the label better. However, I thought I'd make use of it eventually and so I kept it around and now I have the perfect opportunity. By tinting all of the higher points of the sculpt and by shading all of the recesses in between, the wash really nicely hid all of the blotchy nature of the pink base coat. I even managed to highlight the shadow by mixing a little of the pink paint into the wash when I used it on the top of her hair where my highlights would be. The intention there is to have a solid stripe of a highlight, but to leave myself enough difference in tone to be able to highlight within that to really strengthen it when it came to edge highlighting each individual hair later on. I used the same pink and purple in the skin tone as well, 
I've been looking at the colour wheel regularly when practising skin tones, and some of it's starting to come together. I'm practising more with how to end up with the right tone and value with different starting paints, and skin tones are varied enough that you can really experiment and still end up with a good look for whatever model you're working on. Just like I'm getting stuck into the rest of this model, Doone Uluntai, now known as Mad Donna, got stuck into the Underhive. Her abusive upbringing and violent escape has led to serious mental health issues with strong violent outbursts, and she's known for savagely attacking enemies, flaying captives, and even self-mutilation. Don't ask her how she got that bionic eye. She is the Underhive's poster girl of concentrating on the actions of the victim and not their trauma. Her violence and savagery, coupled with the quick wits and skilled combat prowess, has helped her not only survive, but to thrive in the horrible wasteland of the Underhive. Often moving from place to place to avoid bounty hunters or more recently found enemies, she can quickly end up in charge of small or even mid-sized gangs. Naturally, she sides with the Eshers commonly, looking after the other women, but she has run with gangs with other affiliations, notably once leading a sizeable warlock gang. Where she ended up isn't that well known. Last sighted at a settlement named Two Tunnels, a place of some ill repute in the Necromunda lore. And this uncertain ending ties into what I really want to talk about with this model. Uncertainty. The feeling of uncertainty when we have a model that we really want to paint, but aren't sure how it will come out. Maybe it's expensive, maybe it's rare, Maybe it's going to be the centerpiece for our army, or a display model, or a gift. You, you have it in your head that you want to wait until you've painted other models so you can improve your skills, and only do it when you're good enough. Well, mini painting is artwork, and in art there is no strict threshold of good enough, only on work that's completed. And you will only improve by painting more. And especially Painting a model at the top of your pile of opportunity, the model that you will want to paint with care, take your time over, and fully enjoy the process. By painting that model, you can really get the enjoyment of painting. There's no rush. Enjoy the process, enjoy the journey, and the destination will seem all the better for it. We have spoken on this subject on the Back to the Brush podcast if you want my more rambling at length thoughts, but to put it more concisely for this video, a pile of shame is all the models that you have that you want to paint but haven't yet. It's a drag, a burden, a shame. It's a mental block that you have assigned yourself that prevents you from enjoying your models. A pile of opportunity is all the models you have that you want to paint but haven't yet. It's exciting, freeing, and a whole heap of opportunities. The chance to pick out the models you like the most and get those painted. This is not my idea, however it is an idea that I want to champion in my own way. And I want you to take part. Put your pile of shame out of your head and look to your pile of opportunity. Pick that model that you've been putting off. The army commander, the veteran unit, the tank, the rare model, the special edition, the kit bash that you enjoyed putting together. Whatever, whoever it is, pick it up and get some paint on it. That is your favourite model, and so you're going to enjoy painting it the most. As I am here with Madonna. The hair looks awesome. It's not perfect as I had imagined or hoped, but it is painted the best of my ability and I think it looks good. I noticed early on that the hair highlights were quite desaturated. There's a lot of white pigment in the pink that I'm using, and I also use white to highlight her shorts and the armour before it became gold. There are many ways to highlight and many arguments about it. The obvious answer is to always highlight into white because it's the highest value pigment and works on any other colour. The counter to that is that white desaturates any other colour, and you should be highlighting with a more saturated and brighter variant of the same colour. Well, both of these are correct, because this is art. There is no one true way, one right answer to all. It's about the journey, the process, the feeling, and the effect. So, for Madonna, she got desaturated highlights everywhere. 
I started highlighting everything with white or a desaturated version of the midtone to tie everything together. But not everything. I painted the coils of the plasma pistol blue with white highlights, so when I wanted to use blue elsewhere, I also wanted to separate that to have it a different looking blue. And so the clothing blue got a more saturated highlight. The end result is that the blue clothing punches out visually. I'm not convinced I like this effect or that it fits with the desaturation everywhere else, but I'm certainly not paint stripping the model now, I've come so far. I'm so close to having Mad Donna completed that I'm pushing on to the last few details. And what better detail for the finale than Hazard Stripes? A classic Necromunda model deserves a classic Necromunda detail. Once again, using that pink to underlayer the yellow so that it's bright, and white for the desaturated highlight. So there we have Mad Donna finished. Is it the best of my abilities? I'm not sure, but it's certainly pushing it. Is it absolutely perfect? Certainly not. There are several mistakes, and the techniques that I use are not necessarily pristine. But did I enjoy the process, and am I happy that I now have Mad Donna finished? Absolutely. And that's the takeaway that I want for you to take away from this video. And whatever it is that's at the top of your pile of opportunity, your pile of shame, if you still consider it such, I want you to pop down to the comment section and you tell me what that model is. And tomorrow, I want you to come back and tell me that you've painted it, or at least that you've gotten started. And on your way past, you'll notice in the description box I've got a whole bunch of links to some other things that I get up to. And for my regular viewers, there's a donation link in there as well. If you want to send me a few pennies, I am... I have some plans for improving my camera setup, um, I just need some funds to make that actually work. But with all that being said, Madonna finished and my soapbox can go away for the time being. I'm Edscar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.